everyone, my name is Tori and today I'm going to show you how I got these curls and they're great for a daytime look or even a night out and they last a really long time even with thicker, heavier hair so I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Unfortunately, I left my heat protector spray at school. I'm home for break right now and I'm going to make do with the products that I have at my house. But um, first I'm going to use the Garnier Fructis Leave-In Conditioner. And this really just helps if you're going out into humidity or anything like that. It keeps the ends really smooth. And I try to do this at the beginning because um, you don't want it to bulk down your curls once you've already put them in. Now that that's done, you can see that I have separated my hair into two sides. So go right down the middle and the back and this will help you separate what parts you're going to curl and get your sections beat in. And then I'm going to take my fingers at the top of my ear and pull the top half of my hair up so that you can access the lower layers first and work your way through with the curls. Now that your hair is sectioned off, I'm just going to pick a side to start with and I typically start with the back of each section so that when you're done with the curl you can just stick it behind your back and it'll be separated from the ones you haven't worked on yet. So today I am going to just use some Aussie hairspray and I spray each section and then give it time to dry a little bit because you don't want to be um, working directly onto damp hair with hot tools. And I brush through it to make sure that it's going to be a smooth curl. And I do my curls away from my face, so on each side I'm going to go towards the back. And I've heard some people will do it each layer in a different direction, it gives it a little more texture and you can really do whatever you want, but this is what's worked best for me and I think it leaves it looking really natural. Okay, so you're going to take your curling wand and wrap the hair around towards the back of your head. And with longer hair, it's going to be a little more difficult with the one inch. This gives it tighter curls, but you have to pay attention to make sure that all of your hair that you would like to be curled is on the wand and none of it falls off. Through. And I just hold it on until I can feel the heat coming from each layer and it's really trial and error for how long you want to hold it on. I typically do mine for about like 15 seconds. Then when you release it, that's the curl, and I run my fingers around it to keep the curl locked. And it looks really tight at the moment, but at the end I can show you how to loosen it up a little bit and make it more natural. And just keep going with around one inch sections. With longer hair you're going to want a thinner section because that way it's going to get all of the heat where you want it. stronger than hairspray I use at home. I just went through and did the other side curling again towards the back of my head and this is what I came out with. You want to be really careful as you go through the curls to reach the end of the piece of hair on the wand so that it really makes it smooth. You can see on this one how it's a little bit more frayed at the end just because I didn't get all the way down to the bottom so you can go through after you're finished and fix those little bits and pieces but it shouldn't be terribly noticeable when you're done. Now I'm going to take the top part down and start at the top of my hair. Typically when I bring this section down I pull the curls that are already done towards the back of my hair like I showed you before so that you can separate and start on this section up here. And notice how I started a little bit farther down than I did on the bottom layers because the first time I tried out a curling wand, I curled all the way to the top of my head kind of like you would with a clamped curling iron. Ended up looking like a poodle, so do not make that mistake. I kind of like it to be smooth at the top and then go into the curl at the bottom. I am 
just going to finish up this side of my hair so I can show you the front, but I will be right back. Okay, now I've gotten to the front piece of hair. Usually I will take this piece and separate it into a little bit of smaller pieces that way you can get more detailed with the styling of it and make it the way you would like since that's going to be the piece that really stands out. As for the second one, I start a little bit lower than I would even for the other top layers so it kind of has a blending effect when you get to the front piece. Since I don't have bangs or anything, really the shape of it is determined by how I curl this piece. And with the smaller layers, you're going to want to do a little bit shorter time since obviously you'll get that curl quicker with more of the surface area on your curling iron. For this front one, I'm going to start a little bit higher than the second piece so that it has, like I said, that gradual downward spiral. With these two pieces, I kind of want to blend them together and make the curls combine. But there you have a little bit of a flatter part at the top of your face and then your curls come together down at the bottom. Now I have gotten to the other side, so I'm just going to separate it into two pieces like I did before. And on this side you can go a little bit higher even since you don't need this area to be as flat. And if you notice, they do sell these wands with a glove if you are worried about burning your hands since you do have to get so close with the bottom of your hair. Typically, I don't use it just because my hair does get a little bit staticky and frizzy if I run it through my hair with a glove on, but you just have to be very careful and make sure not to burn your hand when you're getting down to the bottom area. And with the shape of these, it automatically does a sort of tapered curl where it's thicker at the top and thinner at the bottom. They do sell wands that are solid if you want a consistent curl, but this way it kind of keeps with that spiral appearance. Roll those two together. And there you have it. This should be the tight curls at the ends. They are a little bit tighter than I would like, so I'll show you how to loosen them up a little bit. I might be going off screen, but whenever I'm done, I flip my head over and shake out the curls. So you see how I get my hands under the top of it, and that way it kind of separates the curls and gets them a little bit looser, and you can really just play with it, run your fingers through your hair, do whatever looseness you like, but as a finishing touch, I am going to add in some Garnier Fructis Miracle Dry Oil. I use the um, pump oil version at home, but this is what I have here and it works just as well and this is to just kind of get a good shine on it to take any frizz that you might have out of your hair and this also helps to loosen up some of the curls if you run your fingers through. And try to focus this towards the ends of your hair because if you get higher up then it's going to mix with the natural oils in your hair and you're going to end up with a more greasy look that you want to avoid. But that is it. So I hope that this helps. I'm not an expert by any means, but let me know in the comments down below if there are any tips or tricks that you guys like and I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Too much air. Too much air.